Hello, my name is Bowen Jillings and I am a park interpreter here at the lovely Garden of the Gods Park in Colorado Springs. And we're talking today about the Long Expedition because 2020 is the bicentennial of Long's Expedition, which conducted a scientific survey of the American West along the Platte, Arkansas, and Canadian rivers in 1820. This was an expedition that famously labeled the American West as the Great American Desert and Long even called it, quote unquote, an area unfit for cultivation, which is ironic, seeing as how the Great Plains are now the nation's breadbasket and produce about a fifth of the world's grains. Now, Stephen Harriman Long was the expedition leader, and he was a major in the United States Army's Corps of Topographical Engineers. He got his master's in engineering from Dartmouth College and taught math at the United States Military Academy at West Point. He also led two previous expeditions before the 1820 expedition. In 1815, he led an expedition of the Upper Miss Mississippi River. And then in 1817, he did an expedition to the Lower Arkansas River, uh, where he founded Fort Smith in modern day Arkansas. And that'll come into play later in our discussion about his 1820 expedition. Long was also known as an inventor. In fact, he designed the very steamboat that his 1820 expedition took up the Missouri River to Council Bluffs, Iowa. He called that steamboat the Western Engineer. It was a shallow draft steamboat designed for river navigation and was the very first steamboat to have its paddle wheel affixed to the rear of the ship. It was also the first steamboat to navigate up the Missouri River. Now Long's expedition began in the spring of 1820 when he received orders to survey the headwaters of the Platte River the Red River and the Arkansas River. This would be the very first American sponsored scientific expedition to explore the region. True, in 1806, Zebulon Pike did explore this region, but his was a military expedition and took very little scientific notation of the area's topography and of its ecology. That's what Long was sent out here to do. His party consisted of 19 men, mostly engineers, scientists, artists, and soldiers. His second in command was a man named Captain John R. Bell. Uh, the medical doctor on the expedition was a 23-year-old man named Dr. Edwin James, but he was also a trained geologist and botanist, and that would come into play in the expedition as well. Uh, Thomas Say, Titian Peel, and Samuel Seymour were not only trained zoologists and naturalists, they were also very accomplished artists. And it would be those three that would capture many of the images seen by the expedition as they traveled through the American West. Now they set out along the Platte River on June 6th of 1820. And it was on the 27th of June that they finally crossed into the region we now call Colorado. Three days later, they first spy the Rocky Mountains. And Long sees this great big peak on the horizon and he mistakes it for the peak that Pike wrote about 14 years prior. What he's actually seeing is what is now called Long's Peak, just west of Denver. They follow the Platte River all the way to the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, where the terrain actually prevents them from going further along the river to find the headwaters. So on July 7th, Long makes the decision to turn south in search of the Arkansas River. And so they follow what we now call West Plum Creek south out of that region. They pass right through Roxboro State Park area, which is relevant to us here at Garden of the Gods because they make note of the big horizontal rock formations in that, that area, which are formed from the same sediments and formed in a very similar way to the rocks we have here in Garden of the Gods. On July 10th, they make camp next to a natural pond that we now call Palmer Lake. It's just a 15 minute drive north of Colorado Springs. And it is there that the expedition identifies what would become the Colorado State Flower, the very beautiful Colorado Columbine. On the 11th of July, they head south again, following the Front Range right through this region, passing through western Colorado Springs, Manitou Springs area, all the way down to Cheyenne Mountain and around it until they spy the Spanish Peaks in the distance. And that's when Long makes the decision to head back north and camp along Fountain Creek. Now, the expedition stays in the area between the 11th and 15th of July. And this allowed um, some good exploration by the party's scientists and Captain Bell kind of fell in love with the area. He really liked its splendor. In fact, he did some exploring of his own. He followed a stream that he found up to some bubbling mineral springs. Uh, the springs are still there today in modern day Manitou Springs. And he names the spring, the, the creek that he followed, excuse me, uh, bubble, uh, Boiling Springs Creek. That actually gets on the map. But eventually that is renamed as well to modern day Fountain Creek. 
Bell was so entranced by the area, he has a very cool quote. He says, quote, the naturalists find new inhabitants. The botanist is at a loss which plant they must first take in hand. The geologist brand subjects for speculation and the geographer and the topographer all have subjects for observation. Indeed, uh, Seymour and Peel and Say not only collect multiple species, they make some great paintings while in the area. However, the expedition leader, Long, was not so entranced, and he really wanted to move on to find the Arkansas River. Therefore, it took some very strong convincing by young Dr. James to try and best Zebulon Pike and actually summit that big bald mountain to the west of us. So eventually, Long begrudges him three days to get that done. On July 13th, uh, James sets out with some companions to uh, try and summit the mountain. And they follow a route that is very, very closely tied to what our modern day uh, uh, Pikes Peak Cog Railway follows today. They make camp just uh, beneath the tree line. And it's finally on the afternoon of the 14th that they get to the summit. James makes lots of notes about the flora and fauna he spies above the tree line. In fact, he writes about these huge swarms of grasshoppers that he encounters up there. And what it turns out is these are grasshoppers on their summer migration. What James didn't do was practice good campfire safety. In fact, the campfire that they had lit on the night of the 13th was untended, and it started a forest fire that burned much of the southern side of the mountain. And on the 15th, they do safely return down the mountain to the Fountain Creek camp, and Long then insists that the party move on south. They travel down to the Arkansas River and follow it west, as far as the mouth of what we call Royal Gorge, and they're the first ones to actually describe it. That's as far as they go west. They then turn and head down uh, the river. Eventually, Long, um, wanting to find the headwaters of the Red, splits the party in two. He sends Captain Bell with the majority of their team along the Arkansas River to head to Fort Smith. And then uh, Long takes a few men and heads down trying to find the headwaters of the Red River. And he believes he does. Unfortunately, he's mistaken. What he finds is the Canadian River. And he follows that down to its confl confluence with the Arkansas, which is right at Fort Smith. And that's where the expedition ends in September of 1820. Now, if you look at what Long's expedition had set out to do, they didn't really achieve their objectives. They didn't find the headwaters of the Platte River. They didn't find the headwaters of the Arkansas River. They didn't find any of the waters of the Red River because it was actually the Canadian River. But taken as a whole, the scientific discoveries made by the Long expedition um, made it very, very worthwhile. It was the first expedition to make a full topographical survey along the Platte River Valley to uh, survey the front range of the Rocky Mountains and also to do a topographical survey of the plains of Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, and Oklahoma. Uh, it identified dozens of new plant and animal species ranging from flowers and insects to conifer trees previously unrecorded and pronghorns, things that we now see uh, a lot here in the American West. It also allowed Dr. James to not only summit that mountain, but also to conduct a geological survey of the region, which is reflected on the map published for the expedition in 1823. The party also made several positive, friendly encounters with the American Indian nations of the area. They record meeting with the Pawnee, the Arapaho, Kiowa, Cheyenne, and Comanche uh, peoples in the region, and several artist renditions of them were, were made. Uh, you might, if you're familiar with their area, be surprised that they didn't encounter any of the Ute people that call the Garden of the Gods region home when they were down here. That has to do with the timing of their expedition. They were here in the summer. In the summer, the Ute nations that, that spent time in the garden were up in the South Park region of Colorado. Here in the Garden of the Gods area is where they spent their winter. So it's actually not surprising they didn't encounter any Utes. You might also be wondering why it is that if Dr. James was the first American to summit that peak, why it bears the name of Zebulon Pike, a man who never set foot on it. Well, it's complicated, but it comes down really to three things. What was already on the maps, some very good marketing, and the influence of a man named John C. Fremont, who led several expeditions in this region in the 1840s. Needless to say, the lobby to get that mountain named Pike's Peak won out. Now, Dr. James was not unrewarded. If you go up to Denver, Colorado, just west of Denver and south of the peak now named after uh, Major Long, Long's Peak, is James Peak, a 13,300 foot mountain that bears the name of Dr. James. Now Long himself would go on to a full career in the military. Uh, he stayed with the army all up till 1863, 
doing mostly railroad work. In fact, in 1829, he wrote the railroad manual that was kind of a staple for the industry through the 19th century. Um, in 1863, he finally retires from the army to go and live on his home in, in Illinois. And it's there where he passed away in 1864. Um, and that's really the influence and the effects of Long's expedition had here in this part of Colorado. They came through here and made some notes, made some great scientific discoveries, and made the very first detailed maps of the region. Hope you enjoyed learning about Long's expedition uh, here on the bicentennial year, 200 years after they traipsed right through this area. And thank you very much for joining us. Have a great day.